In this tutorial for NASA's Astrophoto Challenge, I'm going to show you how to blend two or more images together. Right now, you're looking at the main JS9 4L page for NASA's Astrophoto Challenge. I'll close this guided tour so I can show you where to find the blending tool. It's right here under the Tools dropdown, and it's listed as Blending. The blending tool is one of the basic tools of the JS9 4L image processing application, and it's very useful. It allows you to combine several separate images by visually blending them into a single image. You may find it particularly interesting in working with NASA images for the NASA Data Challenge. For this season of the Astrophoto Challenge, you have five different NASA images of the Lagoon Nebula to choose from. Each one is listed by the name of the NASA telescope that took the image. The first three images come from the Hubble telescope, which captures optical images, or visible light, at three different wavelengths. The fourth image comes from the Chandra X-ray telescope, and it captured X-ray emissions from the Lagoon Nebula. The fifth image comes from the Spitzer Infrared Telescope, which captured the infrared emission from the Lagoon Nebula. If you work with any or all of these images, make sure to submit your work to the NASA Data Challenge. To demonstrate this blending tool, I'm going to use one of the Hubble images, as well as the Chandra image. Again, you could use more than two images with the blending tool if you like, but this will be enough to give you a sense how it works. I'll open the Hubble image first, so that I can process it a bit first before adding in the Chandra image. Now that I have the Hubble image open, I'll do what we do for most images, which is to switch the scale to log scale. Log scale is best for dim objects, and the Lagoon Nebula is certainly a dim object. I'm just going to adjust the settings a bit to make the image look as good as possible. And that's pretty good. Finally, I'll choose a color map for this Hubble image. I'll go with magma. I think that looks pretty good for this image. I'm all set with the Hubble image, so now I'll open the Chandra image. You can't see the Hubble image anymore, but it's still open. That's just because until you blend, you can only see one image at a time, and now the Chandra image is on top. Same as with the Hubble image, I'll switch the scale to log scale for this Chandra image. Again, I'll adjust the settings to get the most out of this image. Alright, there. This is good. And as for color maps, since Chandra is a high energy mission with short wavelengths, I'll use Viridis, which is a good match for the color mapping. All right, so now I have two separately processed images. Here is the Hubble image, just the way it looked a minute ago. And here is the Chandra image, which we just finished. Now it's time to blend them both together. But I wanna make it clear before we do this that the reason we can blend them together is that they are at the same scale. If they were taken at different scales, the two images would not align properly and your blended image wouldn't make any sense. Okay, let's get to blending. If you recall, the tool you want is under the Tools dropdown, and it's listed as Blending. This box will pop up asking you which images you want to blend, and how you want to blend them. I only have two images, and I want to blend them both together, so I'll choose both of them. Now you have to choose a blend mode for both images as well. In order to see both images together, make sure to choose Screen Mode. And look at that! There they are together. I can close this pop-up box now that I've set the blending. So now, in this one image, you can see this huge cloud of gas and dust that was taken at optical wavelengths by Hubble. But because of the image blending, you can also see a bunch of stars behind the dust which are emitting X-rays, picked up by the Chandra telescope. This combination allows you to see hot new stars that are being formed inside of this nebula. This is the reason NASA uses telescopes that detect different wavelengths across the electromagnetic spectrum. And it's also the reason why blending is a great tool for entering the NASA Data Challenge. Try it yourself, using any combination of NASA images and processing settings that you prefer. I'll leave you with one last reminder, which I already mentioned. The blend tool works best with images that were captured at the same scale. And that applies to all of the NASA images here. All of these NASA images were captured at the same scale. However, the NASA images and the micro-observatory images were not captured at the same scale. If you try to blend these images together, the data in the images would not line up correctly, 
and the result would basically be meaningless. So feel free to use the blending tool with multiple NASA images, or you can use it with multiple microobservatory images. Just be careful not to cross over between the two.